So welcome and thank all of you for joining us here today for our latest webinar focused on helping businesses during COVID-19 reopening Cape Breton with Nova Scotia's safety branch. My name is Shannon McNeil and I'm the business planning advisor with Cape Breton Partnership. One of our primary purposes of Cape Breton Partnership is to connect Cape Breton entrepreneurs and companies from any industries to supports, information and resources they need to be successful. And this webinar series has been an important tool to make those connections these past three months. If you missed the, last, the previous six seminars, you can watch them on our website, www.capebreddingpartnership.com. They cover topics from social media marketing, legal concerns, and cybersecurity. On our website, there is also a host of resources available, which we update regularly with information from all levels of government. Before we get started, I'll ask my colleague, Jeremy Martel, to describe some of the functions of this platform. Thank you very much, Shannon. Can you hear me all right? I can. Fantastic. Thank you very much for coming, everyone. Thank you very much uh, to our panelists today, uh, Christine. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to uh, come in and present with us today. Um, so today we're using the Zoom platform for this webinar. There are several tools that will enable you to engage with us and the uh, panelists as we go through today's presentation. You'll see a Q&A tool at the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you have any questions, please click on that tool. Um, and you can ask the question and we will get to them at the end of the presentation. Um, if we are not able to answer all the questions uh, that are asked, then we will try to get an answer and get a hold of you at a later time to, uh, to answer it. Um, there's also going to be a chat function down below there that you'll be able to see. And if you have any technical issues, if anything isn't, you're not hearing anything, you're not seeing anything, please just let us know in the chat. Uh, we'll try to fix it for you as soon as possible so that there is minimal disruption to uh, today's presentation. Presentation. I'll also put my uh, phone number and email in the chat in case anyone has any questions. And throughout the presentation, if there are any helpful links or bits of information uh, that we can share, I'll also be putting it there. Um, just a reminder, uh, as this is a Zoom webinar, no one can see or hear any of the attendees. Um, so uh, don't worry about that. You don't have to worry about, uh, can, can someone hear me or see me drinking my coffee? No, we can't. Uh, you can only see us. So. I think we're pretty much good. Uh, Shannon, uh, feel free to continue uh, introducing our panelists of the day. Thanks, Jeremy. So for, for those of you who have joined our previous webinars, you will have seen that our focus has been to navigate this new and different world, COVID-19. Uh, starting this week, we have been shifting focus with this series, looking at supports and resources that will focus on reopening and reactivating our businesses and our local economy. Today's session fits well, given that today marks the first day that many businesses who have been closed for almost three months have their first opportunities to open and welcome in their customers again, provided they are doing so with safety in mind. That is a key element in today's reopening activities, and it is fittingly a key element in today's webinar series. These webinars always go better with lots of questions, so please use the Q&A function as Jeremy described and let us know if there are future topics you'd like to see. After the presentations, I will start the questions off and then open the floor to the Q&A. Uh, feel free to enter your questions as soon as you think of them, as Jeremy mentioned, we will see them populate on the back end of our webinar. Please note that we may not get to all of them, but we will work to include additional information on our website after the webinar if some questions cannot be immediately answered. Today, we are going to hear from the safety branch of the Nova Scotia Department of Labor, Labor and Advanced Education. Among other responsibilities, this branch is responsible for promoting safe and healthy workplaces and work practices, protection of property and safe facilities and equipment. Though their mandate has always been an important one, our current reality makes their responsibilities all the more important to our local businesses. Uh, representing LAE's safety branch today as our webinar panelist is Senior Executive Director Christine Penny. Welcome, Christine. Great, thanks, Shannon. So I just have to um, push out my presentation here. Ah. Not seeing. So Christine, just the bottom of your screen, there's, Sorry. no, that's totally fine. <laughs> there's a green share screen button. Yeah. If you click that, uh, you should see the options for which screen to share. Yes, and it's not there. Okie dokie. 
I can also share the presentation from this Would side. Would you mind? Work. Thank you. Absolutely. Sorry about that. Not I, a problem I practiced at all. this earlier and it worked, but. Can you see the presentation there? I can. That's great. Fantastic. Thanks. Okay, so thanks everybody for um, for the uh, the invite and your your time today. Um, as um, uh, both uh, Jeremy and Shannon mentioned, this was this the focus today was really about supporting you um, in your reopening or re envisioning your your businesses um, uh, in a safe way. Um, I, I I just want to give a big shout out to the businesses across um, Nova Scotia. I've had the pleasure of in the last three weeks to work with at least different um, sector areas. And I have to say, everybody has been absolutely fantastic, um, curious, interested, um, wanting to really follow the rules and um, really just wanting to understand them and do their very best. So just a, just a great big um, shout out to uh, the businesses in Nova Scotia. So next slide. Can I do that myself? No. Okay, thanks. So we are in the world of a pandemic, um, COVID-19, as uh, I'm sure all of you are, are uh, well aware. Um, and that caused Nova Scotia to create and implement um, an order um, by the Chief Medical Officer of Health to really guide um, some prevention um, expectations for all Nova Scotians. Um, and this, this has been, um, has impacted everybody. Um, and so either your work has uh, changed like, like mine has, or you are um, unable to work, um, or your work has, um, has been modified greatly in the, in the way the, that you do it. Um, so, you know, an example is um, our work was not generally focused on uh, public health, um, but it is considered a hazard as a workplace. So we've had to shift gears early to uh, be able to support businesses across Nova Scotia to navigate the order. So in early days, um, the order to most folks, including myself, was not necessarily that clear. And so folks were concerned whether they were um, covered as a closed business or they were allowed to open and if they were allowed to open what um, what did rules did they have to follow and so that was our early um, our early business days for for my folks um, and the work continues to support businesses so in the last couple of weeks our focus has been really on those that were ordered closed um, to support them in the development of a, some really strong sector guides that would allow them to reopen. And today is, is the day for most of those folks being um, June 5th. So I think everybody's been very excited to, to get here and it's been, um, it's been a lot of work for everybody um, in all of the sectors and um, everybody's done a fantastic job and I think we've, we've landed nicely. And the continuation, and I'm going to talk about that a little later too, um, with what the supports will look like, especially for those that um, that weren't ordered to close, but know they need to meet the expectations um, of the order and what that could look like for them. So next slide, please. So public health protocols for businesses. So the main two things that you need to have in, in mind are really the social gathering um, piece and the physical distancing piece. So as most of you probably know by now, because it seems to be um, quite widespread, is the, in, is the distance um, that you need to maintain from any other person outside of your household or your bubble is, is two meters. And the gathering limits are 10. Um, and they only apply to those where you have a space that you cannot maintain the two, um, the, ten, the two meters within the 10. So this includes though indoor and outdoor space. And this was updated in the last order. Next slide. So as I mentioned, um, earlier, the, the focus in the last couple of weeks has been really on those that were ordered to close and, and really supporting them and hoping they would be able to reopen on the fifth or, or soon after. 
through good um, COVID-19 prevention plans. And I can, I'm pleased to say that uh, 42 have, um, have gone through um, the approval process and have been approved as of uh, today. And so businesses that were ordered to close look a lot like the, the list here. Um, we have restaurants, we have drinking establishments, we have personal services. So, you know, cosmetology and barbershops, spas, nails, um, and your body art, um, as well as fitness facilities. So your gym, your yoga facility, um, those types of, of businesses. Also private campgrounds will be able to um, expand their business as well. And we did a lot of work on regulated and unregulated health professions. So massage, um, therapy, podiatry, um, uh, uh, lots of um, veterinarians, lots of things fall, um, fall into that, that scope as well. Another one that that's not on the list that might be um, uh, important to uh, mention was also the, the gaming. So those that were ordered to close, again, were asked to build a guide or a prevention plan that um, would, would support and assist um, the, um, the requirements set out in the um, public health order. And but kind of to frame it simply, um, we looked at and we asked for um, things within sort of this list of, um, of requirements. So, the first and foremost was the way you would look at it would be your workflow or your people flow um, and how you would manage that in whatever business um, you, you were operating and so that you could maintain um, physical distancing in either that workplace or that business. Um, we asked them to think about um, their number of clients and what they could maybe accommodate now but maybe could accommodate later. Um, in, in order to recognize and support the, uh, the gathering numbers as well as the, um, as the uh, distancing numbers. Um, we also asked them to think about how they did work, like what was their work, um, what might be some touch points as it relates to preventing uh, COVID-19 and any interactions they may have had with their customers and how they might um, create you know, the opportunity to maintain that two um, meter distance. Um, and if not, how would they mitigate that? Um, a great big focus on cleaning. So not just your standard cleaning, but enhanced cleaning and, and what that regime would look like. Um, how you would access equipment, how you would clean equipment um, was also a requirement. And then the, one of the biggest pieces for me is how do you prepare your employees to come back? So thinking about how you would train them on the guide, how you would support them in the guide. Um, so lots of ideas um, in that space around, you know, team, daily team meetings, signing a safety person for, for each shift, those kinds of things. And I know that those would come with bigger organizations, but I think it's still important in, um, in smaller businesses. And also preparing your, your customers and your clients that are coming in. So some folks were um, putting things on Facebook around the expectations. They were sending emails out. They were calling folks. Uh, signage is a really good way to, uh, to do that as well. And then it's uh, monitoring, making sure that you um, are understanding, um, in particular, uh, illness that may be... Um, in your your business or not hopefully not in your business and how you will um, monitor um, people uh, as they come into your business but also your your staff next slide please so what we required of the businesses that were um, set out to close as a part of that order again was that they must develop um, overarching guidance documents within that frame. So to cover up all those things I mentioned in the first slide. And they um, submitted those and we looked at them both from a public health perspective, as well as from an occupational health and safety perspective, because they are businesses. And in the act, it requires you to manage a hazard and the hazard just happens to be uh, COVID-19. So we use both lenses when we reviewed these guides um, and we there was lots of back and forth there was tons of feedback 
Um, everybody was great, um, open and honest and um, transparent in what their business needs were. As you can probably appreciate, we um, and my staff would not know um, how each and every sector functions and works. So there was a lot of um, information that had to be exchanged in that support. And then once both parties were um, happy with the document, we submitted it to uh, Dr. Strang. And, um, and if he was comfortable, we would issue an approval to that sector to, um, to support their uh, reopening. Next slide. So businesses that were not required to close, um, we are still looking for prevention plans. So not a guide, not an overarching framework, but a, but a plan for your business and how you're going to prevent COVID-19. Um, these do not have to um, be submitted, but we would like something in writing. So you would look at it just like you would with your um, occupational health and safety program or policy that you require at any workplace. And in this case, you're not managing a physical hazard, you're actually managing a um, viral hazard, um, which would be COVID-19. So we would like you to, every business, to think about how they would manage um, their customers and their clients. So the same list that I provided earlier, I have presented below, because you would th want to think about and document sort of how you're going to um, how you're going to do all of these things in a safe and preventative way. So you're, while you don't have to submit your plan for approval, we would expect um, you to have something documented that demonstrates that you um, have thought about uh, this list of, of things below. Next slide, please. So um, we've been um, asked this over the next uh, or the past couple of weeks. So when can a business open? So businesses that were um, clearly identified in the order that were closed um, and it clearly identified the, the June 5th date um, will be able to open um, as of today if they had an approved guide. And, and again, we've issued 42. So I think um, in the spirit of supporting all those that were in the order that were required to close. I think uh, most of those are in a position where they could, they, legally they could open, whether they're, they're ready to open might be a different question. Um, and again, those guides were approved by government, um, but they're owned by the sector. And um, so, and they did a really, and most folks did a really super job in, um, in doing those. The, um, the other piece that I think I would mention here is there were an, um, a couple of uh, industry or business groups that were not under the June 4th or 5th date, but that come to mind would be gaming. Um, gaming, uh, their sector plan was approved uh, yesterday. And um, so I, my understanding is the order would need to be updated for them to legally be able to open but I'm pretty sure that that will likely uh, come today, the, the changes in the order. Next slide. So as was mentioned in the intro, our focus really in the uh, safety branch and in particular the Occupational Health and Safety Division, um, which comes under my responsibility, is really about um, holding both um, employers and employees up around having a safe and healthy workplaces. And so by, by having good practices and standards, um, this, this helps us to uh, protect both employees and employers, as well as um, the general public that might be in um, coming into the business space. So over the last couple of weeks, we've worked um, very much collaboratively with a number of folks being in the Department of Business and Public Health, and even in recent days with um, Department of Environment, who's responsible for restaurants as well as alcohol and gaming, to ensure we are aligned in how we conduct our business, whether it's from standard perspective or from an inspection perspective, because um, most folks would know us from that uh, inspection line of the business. So again, just a reminder that why 
why would OSH be present um, in, this, in this COVID world? Um, it is a hazard. It's a workplace hazard. It's not the traditional hazard that we all know um, related to chemicals or, or falls or things like that, but it is considered a hazard. And so we need to plan and protect and build pra good practices in order to prevent um, the spread and the management of, of COVID-19. Next slide, please. So I wanted to just talk a little bit about how we are going to be supporting folks as they are building and um, creating new workspaces for themselves that um, have the prevention of COVID-19 in mind. And we've already started some of these in spot checks. Um, we did the big box stores and we did some um, construction um, spot checks across the province. And um, just so you, you all know, this is, not, um, this is not with a big stick. This is to go out and support you in your plan development. So you will never see us come in and say, where is your plan? Oh, you don't have a plan. Oh, we're gonna issue an order. This is more gonna be about how are you doing in your plan? Do you have one? Do you have any questions? How can we help you build those plans? Um, this is a supporting exercise. We are all in this together. We are all trying really hard to navigate this. This is new for everybody. So we appreciate that. And that's how you'll see us when we show up. Um, and so you may see us come into your businesses just to, just to do a check-in and, um, and see how you're making out. Um, there will be, we also have a 1-800 number um, and that most folks know it as a, an anonymous complaint line. Um, but this has kind of evolved over the last number of weeks and we're seeing an increase in calls around sort of how can you help us with our plans. And so we would offer that out to, um, to any business that has, um, that needs some support or some help in understanding what's expected of um, a workplace um, COVID-19 prevention plan that you can certainly call the 1-800 number. We have some really um, lovely people on that line and have expanded the resources there. So you should um, easily be able to get some support when you call that, uh, when you call that number. Next slide, please. So um, just a couple of suggestions. For those that were ordered closed, um, we're, gonna, we're suggesting that you get in touch with your industry association. And we know for some there was an association. So um, th those that develop the plans on behalf of folks are really doing um, a really good job to try to reach um, those that don't have associations but might be in the business of, of um, of whatever that sector might be. And it, it, the example that I think of is fitness. Um, unfortunately, there was no association. And so um, uh, an individual took it upon themselves to develop um, a plan that would serve everybody. Um, so we asked you first to try to connect with that person. Obviously, if you don't know who that person is, that makes it a little challenging. So the other way that you'll be able to access these guides is through um, the reopening um, website. And we will have a, a list of links to which you can access um, all of the sector plans that were developed and approved as part of the, the reopening um, plan. So I'm not sure if there's any, honestly, anybody left in the sectors that hasn't, that was ordered closed, that, um, that has not submitted a plan. But if you, um, if you have, um, if you don't have a plan and you think you're a part of a sector, uh, you know, please reach out to us. But, and if you are a part of a sector and you know you don't have a, a guide built or a plan built, um, you can certainly submit them to us um, and we will um, look at them and, uh, and give you an approval. Next slide. So again, you can uh, reach out to us um, through two, two ways. Um, we can be reached, uh, we have a, a, um, an email address as well as a 1-800 number if you, uh, if you need to, to reach us. And next slide. So again, our broader reach um, where you will find lots of great resources that we're, we're still building, but there's, there's lots there now. And even a, um, 
a simple sort of what do you put in your prevention plan is also available on um, on Nova Scotia.ca reopenings slash dot um, dot Nova Scotia slash Nova Scotia. Um, or you can submit your, and if you have a plan that you'd like to submit, if you were required to be closed, you can send it to uh, Nova Scotia Economy at novascotia.ca. But again, those that were not required to close and you need some support, either call the business navigators or you call my 1-800 um, number and we would um, be glad you, to support you in, in trying to develop those plans. Okay, thank you. Thanks again, Christine. That was fantastic. Um, a lot of great information there. So we'll now look at some uh, questions from our attendees. Um, so I will start off by asking one to get the process started here. So, so a lot of questions or a lot of businesses are very anxious and nervous about opening today and over the next week or two and want to make sure they're doing the right things. Like, what is the best place for businesses to go to uh, to find out some some of this information? So I would go to our reopening website. Um, again, there's a, really, um, there's a really good tool that sort of lists some of the things that I have there, but will help you, um, will help you uh, develop your own plans. Um, also, um, you know, and this, is, this was happening as we were building one guide, we would share the one that was approved with somebody else. Some really good guidance documents already on the website that I think would be tremendously helpful for folks. To, uh, to make sure they're, they're taking care, right? Taking care of themselves and taking care of their staff as well as their clients. And we've just added the link for the uh, reopening Nova, preparing to reopen Nova Scotia website in the chat function. So uh, please feel free to click on that link and uh, be taken to that web portal with all kinds of info. Great, so while we do uh, wait for a few questions to uh, populate, um, so we do have a short evaluation survey on your screen that Jeremy's going to launch. Uh, please fill it out to, uh, and it will help us to uh, inform upcoming topics and format. Um, your input is very valuable in tailoring these sessions over the next over the last few months, so we look uh, forward to your responses. And, uh, I do have another question here. Um, so this question uh, is as follows. What is the expected turnaround time between accommodation guests for B&B house housekeeping to enter to clean and receive new guests? Yeah, so there isn't um, a standard currently, um, but it's a really great question and one that Dr. Strang and I have been talking about actually for the last couple of days. Um, and so, um, we are trying to um, develop right now a resource guide for uh, hotels as well as um, uh, visitors accommodations. But in general terms, it, it, uh, an hour is what we're sort of talking about as the, uh, the rule of thumb for time between. With, with good, you know, enhanced cleaning, um, we, we feel that's probably adequate. Okay. Great, uh, another question. What would happen if it appeared that the public was not following the general rules and guidelines of the existing order? Could we go back to closing and the stricter orders and restrictions be imposed once again? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, it, that's a possibility. I mean, the expectation, the rules are in place for a reason, right? It's to protect us all. And um, so, yeah, could could be, um, you know, but I think we're all doing our part. Um, and I think as business owners, I'm seeing a lot of, you know, great information being shared with their clients and signage. And it's only honestly been um, a couple of exceptions where people just were defiant about it. Um, and so we still have the option um, to call in the police enforcement as it relates to the public. You do the enforcement as it relates to businesses but the police can also um, support us in, in the enforcement of, of the public should it be an extreme case. But honestly, I think most folks are doing their part. But yes, we all, we all need to take on the role and, and do what we're supposed to as a court in accordance with the order. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, next question. Uh, so I'll just read this verbatim. We are a motel and I was told that it was mandatory to allow a room to rest for 24 hours before anyone's, anyone is allowed in the room? Is this the case or is it just best practices? 
there is no, there's no accepted um, rule on this right now. So it is best practice. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, next question. Um, what, if any, special things must be taken into consideration when your work takes your employees into custom customers homes, for example, flooring installers? Yeah, that's a really good, um, good question. So, you know, I, I, it's the same, um, I would use my own um, staff as an example where we're going into um, workplaces that aren't their own homes or things like that. And so what you may want to do is think about how you're going to manage that risk. Um, and so what, what, um, what my staff are doing is they have a little bit of a questionnaire where they say, before they go into a place, have you had any, um, have you had any cases? Do you know people that have traveled in the last 14 days? What is your, you know, what are your, your general practices around COVID-19? And so they'll do a pre-screen before they go in. Um, and then it's the responsibility on yourself, right? Making sure your, your hands are washed, depending on the, um, the distance requirements or what you're able to do, um, because it, it does depend on the service, right? If you're repairing equipment versus you're, you're um, taking care of somebody's feet, for example, it, it's totally different, um, uh, totally different, uh, obviously, service. So you may need to take on extra measures, um, for example, a mask or gloves or, or something like that, I think would be... You know, but 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 you you need to sort of think about it from a risk perspective and manage that risk both from where you're going into, but also for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, a um, couple more questions here. Uh, at a motel, should a guest arrive that is from out of province and has not isolated? Are we expected to enforce the laws? Yeah. Well, you can't enforce the laws. You're not uh, you're not a, a police officer or. A, or a OSH officer, so no, you wouldn't be expected to re, um, to enforce the the law there. But you, you may want to. I mean, we're again, we're all in this together. So if we have information that we think that should be in, you know, brought to their attention, then I would suggest you would you may want to share that. Um, for sure. Okay. Uh, so it looks like we have one final question, unless. Uh, other questions come up in the meantime. So uh, the question is, do we, do we need a plan for Airbnb just opening seasonal and didn't close for the COVID-19? Uh, so do we need, yeah, so do we need a plan for Airbnb just opening seasonally and didn't close for COVID-19? Yes, you do. Yeah. Okay. So any, any type of business, you should really have a specific plan for your business. And so how your, managing um, the prevention of COVID-19. So everybody should, every sort of business or workplace should have a plan. So, and to clarify on that for Airbnbs that kind of find themselves in a bit of a, bit of a situation in definition wise, um, they would definitely fall under that, clear, that uh, classification then. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's, an ex it's a money exchange, so that's where it becomes a, um, a workplace of some sense, right? And I, I mean, I don't think it hurts anyway. It doesn't hurt to have a plan, um, especially if something did happen, you can say you did your very best, right? Absolutely. Uh, I, uh, I actually had a question. Um, I was very happy to hear, and I think a lot of businesses will be very happy to hear that um, there's kind of a, a general understanding or practice that uh, if any uh, OHS officers or so on uh, go to a business and are, uh, you know, that whether it's an inspection or a check-in or whatever, and they ask to see stuff that they're going to be pretty understanding. And I think a lot are going to be very happy to hear that. Um, so I guess I have a two-part question. Number one, could you explain a little bit about what, what a visit like that might end up looking like? Um, and then I'll ask my other question after that. <laughs> okay. So we are currently um, building some tools um, to, to support folks. Um, so, you know, uh, folks will randomly show up. Um, introduce themselves and tell you that they're there to help you and support you and will probably ask, you know, have you developed a plan? Um, were you part of the closure um, sectors or were, are you, you know, sort of um, outside of that? And, and just, and then we'll 
I would say they would walk through their plan, whatever they had or what they didn't have, um, to see what, uh, how they were doing. And then we'll have some tools like a checklist and maybe a, a nice template that we can provide, especially for those that, you know, maybe have it written on the side of their, uh, their, their notebook or something that's, you know, they were struggling to, to kind of get there. So, so that's what I would say that the supports will look like. Perfect. Um, so as the second part to that, um, if, and it's kind of related to another question we had from a motel owner, if, um, if there's an inspection, if someone comes by for a, a check-in and, and the business is following all the rules to the best of their ability, however, they do witness something that might be outside of the business's control, maybe a customer or a client is nearby or in the space and isn't following the rules, um, what are the business's responsibilities at that point? Yeah, so, so we would ask them to report that um, and they have one of two ways because it's the public. Um, they can report it to the police or they can report it to my 1-800 number um, and um, we will make sure that the right person um, takes care of it. And it may, it may be us because it is a workplace, so, um, but I would suggest they report that. Perfect, thank you. Great, we got a couple more uh, questions. And just sorry, if I could just add, um, our 1-800 our number is anonymous, so you're not, you don't even need to leave your name, um, but obviously it's good if you had some contact information in case we need more details, but you, you're not required to. We will still follow up um, as long as we know where it is that, um, that you've witnessed something. And I've just reposted that 1-800 number in the chat there for anyone that would like to copy down in the event that they might find it helpful. Next, uh, we have a few more questions here. Uh, are accommodation providers required or encouraged to ask guests if they exhibit any, any COVID-19 symptoms prior to check-in during their stay or during their stay? Mm -hmm. um, again, it comes back to risk management, right? And so you're, you're taking care of yourself and your employees. Um, and also for the best interest of your other clients, I would suggest that you would want to do some level of screening um, even if it's the inquiry around, you know, have you had symptoms or, are you, you know, are you COVID-19 related symptoms or have you traveled outside of the province in the last 14 days? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And it looks like the final question, unless others come in, uh, and one did. Uh, so are two couples that are not related able to share a room in a hotel under these new restrictions? Sorry, say that one again. Two couples that aren't that are in not related. Also, they are not related. So, are two couples that are not related able to share a room in a hotel under these new restrictions? I think it depends. It depends on if they're um, just if they're not in the same household, but they happen to be bubbling, <laughs> then they can, right? Um, you know, this is the same thing that um, sort of along the same lines as, as the restaurant owners are asking. Um, you're not necessarily going to know that, right? And it's not up to any business really to police this. Um, we, we hope, and Dr. Strang is so great on his messages to say, this is all in our hands, everybody's hands. And so we hope that people just do the right thing. So, but that again is not your responsibility to police. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, next question. We will we have an opportunity to have my original question answered? Uh, okay. So, will we have an opportunity to have my original question answered with a timeline? <laughs> timeline for accommodation housekeeping uh, can enter the guest the guest room once the guests have checked out. Is it one hour or is it twenty four hours? I, yeah, and I think this is a reiteration of, of the previous yeah. question, but may, maybe, yeah. uh, Christine, if you can just repeat what you had said before, because I, I think you answered probably pretty good, but maybe uh, um, our questioner uh, didn't hear it. <laughs> so it's one hour, yeah, yeah, is the best practice. But there's a number of um, industries that really, there's not a lot of resources available locally that we will be building resources for, and we'll share them on the website, and that actually one in particular that and we're hoping to, to build and get out soon. 
And uh, on our uh, K Brighton Partnership website, we actually have several resources related to COVID-19 direct redirecting to provincial supports, federal supports, other supports, and a list of available local businesses that uh, supply, manufacture um, PPE, for, uh, personal protective equipment, and provide uh, cleaning services locally. So um, many businesses might be able to check out that site. I'll put it in the chat as well. Um, and there could be all kinds of resources there that uh, you could find very useful um, as you reopen. Okay, um, next question. Uh, what says, well, thank you for your answer today. One more question. Do What do you recommend accommodation providers do if a guest checks in with COVID-19 symptoms or develops COVID-19 symptoms during their stay? Um, well, hopefully they have the option to leave. Yeah. yeah. Or or you're, or you're in, um, or they're in self-isolation in your, your facility for two weeks. Um, I, you know, I don't really see it any, any different than somebody that has a staff person that, uh, that you know, has COVID-19. They need to report it to 811. They also need to, um, to uh, do the assessment tool on 811 and um, the rest of the process kind of sits behind um, and they would likely, um, public health would get in touch with you in order to make some really good recommendations to you um, around sort of what to do next for sure. But all circumstances are different so it's really hard to kind of speak specifically but um, they definitely need to report it. Okay, um, so that concludes the questions as far as I can see. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us and the great questions. Uh, thank you especially to today's panelists, Christine Penny and her team at uh, Nova Scotia's Department of Advanced Education and the Safety Branch. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, we'll, we will work to answer any outstanding questions, um, which uh, I don't believe there were any. So. Uh, future, so future sessions are currently being developed and planned for later this month. So please continue to watch for details on our website and social media. And uh, Jeremy, if, uh, do you have any additional comments on the tech side? Um, I, I, I have a very small mention, but but we did receive one last last final quote last final question. <laughs> Uh, if a person does have to self-isolate in a hotel after already checking in, does the government uh, have an opportunity or an option to pay for that stay, or would the guest have to pay out of pocket? We don't have any um, set uh, practices around that, but absolutely, it would be the um, it would be the public that would uh, that would pay for that. There you go. Um, yes, yeah, so, so uh, from a, a tech perspective, no, nothing really to add other than uh, we will be circulating this presentation uh, and uh, Christine's presentation to those who registered today. Um, they will be available on our website as well uh, so that if uh, anyone who registered but wasn't able to make it uh, due to prior commitments, they can check that presentation out again. Um, and uh, we'll be able to share those links and uh, phone numbers that Christine provided as well. Um, so please keep checking in with us. And Christine, thank you so much for taking the time today. I'm sure today has been a long one, as has this week, as has the last three months. <laughs> and I'm sure the days will not get shorter, but uh, we hope that uh, they, you are all at your team able to enjoy it very soon. <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, everyone. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Take care. Okay, bye. Thanks.